On one occasion, while talking with Gurdjieff, I asked him whether he considered it possible to attain cosmic consciousness. I do not know what you call cosmic consciousness, said Gurdjieff. It is a vague and indefinite term. Anyone can call anything he likes by it. In most cases, what is called cosmic consciousness is simply fantasy. But before we can speak of cosmic consciousness, we must define in general what consciousness is. By observing in yourself the appearance and the disappearance of consciousness, you will inevitably see one fact which you neither see nor acknowledge now, and that is that moments of consciousness are very short and are separated by long intervals of completely unconscious mechanical working of the machine. You will then see that you can think, feel, act, speak, work, without being conscious of it. Your principal mistake consists in thinking that you always have consciousness, and in general, either that consciousness is always present, or that it is never present. In reality, consciousness is a property which is constantly changing. Now it is present, now it is not present and there are different degrees and different levels of consciousness. Both consciousness and different degrees of consciousness must be understood in oneself by sensation, by taste. No definitions can help you in this case, and no definitions are possible so long as you do not understand what you have to define. It is necessary to distinguish consciousness from the possibility of consciousness. We have only the possibility of consciousness and rare flashes of it. I cannot say that what was said about consciousness became clear to me at once, but one of the subsequent talks explained to me the principles on which these arguments were based. Not one of you has noticed the most important thing that I have pointed out to you, he said. That is to say, not one of you has noticed that you do not remember yourselves. You do not feel yourselves. You are not conscious of yourselves. In order really to observe oneself, one must first of all remember oneself. Otherwise, you yourselves do not exist in your observations, in which case, what are all your observations worth? These words of Gurdjieff's made me think a great deal. It seemed to me at once that they were the key to what he had said before about consciousness. But I decided to draw no conclusions whatever, but to try to remember myself while observing myself. The very first attempts showed me how difficult it was. Attempts at self-remembering failed to give any results except to show me that in actual fact we never remember ourselves. What else do you want, said Gurdjieff? This is a very important realization. People who know this already know a great deal. The whole trouble is that nobody knows it. If you ask a man whether he can remember himself, he will of course answer that he can. If you tell him that he cannot remember himself, he will either be angry with you, or he will think you an utter fool. The whole of life is based on this, the whole of human existence, the whole of human blindness. If a man really knows that he cannot remember himself, he is already near to the understanding of his being. I was once walking along the Litany toward the Nevsky, and in spite of all my efforts, I was unable to keep my attention on myself. The noise, movement, everything distracted me. At last, I felt a kind of ridiculous irritation with myself, and I turned into the street on the left, having firmly decided 
to remember myself, at least for some time, or at any rate until I reach the following street. I reach the Nadezhdinskaya without losing the thread of attention, except perhaps for short moments. I reach the Nevsky still remembering myself, and was already beginning to experience the strange emotional state of inner peace and confidence which comes after great efforts of this kind. Just round the corner on the Nevsky was a tobacconist's shop where they made my cigarettes. Still remembering myself, I thought I would call there and order some cigarettes. Two hours later, I woke up in the Tavricheskaya, that is, far away. The sensation of awakening was extraordinarily vivid. I can almost say that I came to. I remembered everything at once, how I had been walking along, how I had been remembering myself, how I had thought about cigarettes, and how at this thought I seemed all at once to fall and disappear into a deep sleep. At the same time, while immersed in this sleep, I left the tobacconists, called at my flat, telephoned to the printers, I wrote two letters, then again I went out of the house, intending to go to the Officerskaya. Then I had changed my mind as it was getting late. I had taken an izvoschik and was driving to my printers, and on the way I began to feel a strange uneasiness as though I had forgotten something. And suddenly I remembered that I had forgotten myself. I had forgotten to remember myself. 